Entitlement reaches all walks of life, as you'll find out in this episode of Entitled People. Our first one is from, Hi, I'm Jamie Poo. I work part-time at a community center fitness area. Most of the time, people are lovely. We have regulars, and it's nice to see them. They work out, they clean up after themselves, they leave. It's great. Some days it gets annoying. The community center is directly attached to a local high school. The very nice pool often holds high school swim meets and water polo matches and whatnot. To get to the pool observation deck, one must cut through said fitness center. On a game or meet day, a lot of people who normally wouldn't have access to our very large expansive gym with super expensive equipment can suddenly be in the building and causing all kinds of trouble. I only mention this because you have to be extra careful to enforce rules on these days in case some stranger decides to try and deadlift 400 pounds and breaks a fibula or something. This was one of those days. Mr. Karen is a fellow I've never seen. No biggie. New member, perhaps? Day pass, maybe? He has a small child with him. My estimation is the child is five-ish. The man is in jeans and a sweater. This seems strange, but who the hell am I to judge what people exercise in? Our rules pretty explicitly state that children cannot use any equipment unless they are above age 14. From 8 and above, they are welcome to use our track as long as a guardian is in the building. The man and kid are on bikes. To be fair, the kid isn't being a twat. That happens a lot too. Kids will run in like psychos and try to use a rower and inevitably squish a finger or drop a weight. So props to him, I guess. I walk up and apologize and tell him that the kid can't be on the equipment, but he's more than welcome to use the track. Mr. Karen loses his mind. Why? He's not doing anything! You're right, but it's our rules, I'm sorry. Kids have to be older than 8 to use our track unsupervised, but he can't be on our equipment. How do you know he's not 8? What? You assume his age. I can do whatever I want. I did assume. I'm sorry. He certainly isn't over 14, so he can't be on the equipment. He asks for my manager, who tells him the same thing, and says this classic line. I don't pay a thousand a year to be a member here for you to tell me what I can and can't do. He then asks for the Parks and Rec City manager's contact. We give it to him. He tells me to F all the way off and he leaves. Later, I tell my other boss about this. They go down to registration to see who this dude is. Turns out, not a member. They have no record of it. Most likely came to watch water polo so he freaked out and lied to try to get his way. He sucks. In this day and age, this entitlement really doesn't shock me. I, I guess I would say I'm shocked at the fact that the father would willingly put their child at risk using equipment that they really shouldn't be using, but that doesn't shock me either because in a lot of ways that goes hand in hand with their entitlement. This next one is by Phantom Celebi. So my husband, 34 male, and I, 36 female, were coming back from upstate New York. We went to see my brother, who was like 4 hours away from us, by Greyhound. It was a long trip and I have kidney issues due to lupus, so I rushed to the bathroom when we got to the Port Authority. For info, I am short, chubby, and use a walker. So when I got to the bathroom, I had no stalls to go to but one. There were a lot of stalls. However, I could only use the disabled person's stall, because it was the only one big enough for my walker. So I waited outside of the stall for a while, and then knocked when it got to the 10 minute point. The woman huffed and said, Use the other stall, bitch! I tell her I can't because I'm disabled. The lady gets up. This woman grumbled, and I heard a flush twice. The toilets are automatic, so I'm guessing she was getting up and it flushed again before she fully got up. She walks out of the stall and she was bigger than me in height and weight. She had long green cornrows and name brand everything. She was wearing a tracksuit. She looked mad. I couldn't really wait anymore though. 
So I rush by her and go to the bathroom. It was quick, but what I didn't expect was the lady banging on the stall, telling me to get the F out. She did this over and over. I tell her I am almost done, and when I walk out, it was the same woman. She says, You stepped on my shoe. Do you know how much this is? More than ten of your cart. If I see you again, I'll make sure you are paraplegic. Not a typo. This is how she said it. I am freaking out because I think this crazy lady is going to kill me for leaving a tiny mark on her shoe. This is when I hear, Bitch, shut your fat ass up. You ain't no thug. This woman then darts her eyes to this 4 foot 11 granny. Woman had to be 80 or something, but this granny was tough. This girl looked upset. The granny then looks at me and says, Baby, are you okay? I nod and she smiles. She then drags the larger woman out. I'm guessing this was her grandma, because they looked similar and she had the fear of God in her eyes. That was a weird bathroom trip, but one I will not forget. Trying to fight somebody in the bathroom over shoes, threatening a disabled person all over shoes because you felt entitled to use the disabled stall that you really shouldn't have been in in the first place. Honestly, I I'm glad this old lady came in and shut this fucking woman down because I'm starting to question if she was just all talk. I mean, in my experience, the people who pipe up the loudest are the first to cave when challenged. And our final one is from Sunflower971. Years ago, I heard my sweet neighbor and another woman arguing on the sidewalk. I looked closer and noticed they were both pulling a plant pot in different directions and about to fight. No clue what was up, but knew my neighbor. If she was arguing, she was right. Me and my husband went over to intervene. My husband wanted to help make peace. Me? I was going to help my neighbor, no questions asked. Why the argument? The other woman was a new neighbor. Our nice neighbor noticed her plant pots were missing and were in the new neighbor's yard. Yup, new neighbor had stolen nice neighbor's plants, plant pots, and yard decor and decorated her yard with it. My nice neighbor had hand painted several pots that were in her yard, thus they were easy to identify as hers. We all walked over to the new neighbor's yard to get our other neighbor's stuff back. When we got to the new neighbor's yard, we noticed several things looked both weird and very familiar. Oh yeah, and the new neighbor had called the cops on us, or at least someone did. Anyway, the new neighbor had planted patches of different types of grass all over the yard in a checkerboard pattern, as well mismatched shrubs and flowers. I looked at our house a little closer. Yup, we were missing grass patches from the side of the house and one of our shrubs. When the police arrived, the new neighbor was adamant the plants, pots, grass, shrubs, and yard decor were hers. She informed the cops she dug them up from other yards in the middle of the night and planted them. Yup, she claimed finders keepers. Didn't quite work out. My nice neighbor insisted on pressing charges for pitted theft and destruction of property. We just dug up our grass patches and replanted them. Some of them even survived it. Nosy neighbors kept walking by after the new neighbor was arrested. As we were digging things up, we explained why to them. Neighbors kept recognizing their stuff from her yard. One neighbor asked if we'd seen a picnic table as his was missing. We hadn't thought to check the backyard. Yup, picnic table and yard full of her finder's keeper's hull. She moved pretty much right afterward. We didn't miss her. Edit, for those pointing out that it's petty and not petit theft, thank you. However, petit theft is correct by Florida law. Yes, this happened in Florida. It might explain a lot. Florida law section 812.014 Petit theft is defined as when a person steals property from a person or business valued at less than $750. The first thing that jumps into my head is clearly this person, this entitled person, was watching fun with Dick and Jane, and they saw the yard scene and thought, oh, that'd be a perfect idea. But to be the new person in the neighborhood and you feel entitled to a bit of everybody's yard? <laughs> wow.
Alright, that's enough entitlement for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Entitled People. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons and super thanks contributors. Have a great day and stay safe out there.